bus conversion FAQs. Let's talk about the toilet. Yes, everyone needs one. We use it a couple times a day. So let me go have a seat and we'll start the video. So comfortably sitting on my throne. Don't worry, the lid is still on. We're here to talk about toilets and toilets in an RV are an important part of life. And sometimes they can be smelly, they can be nasty, and they're not always fun. That being said, we need a toilet. Now, there are three primary types of toilets used in moving vehicles. One is the flush toilet, the other is the dry or composting toilet, and finally we have the cassette toilet. Now, the three models have their advantages and their disadvantages. And let's start with probably the most popular, and that is the flush toilet. It's been used in RVs for decades. It works. It simply works. But a lot of people are afraid of what's connected to the toilet, and that's the black tank. Now, the black tank has a bad reputation, and for a reason. If you don't put enough liquid in your black tank, it becomes full of solids. Solids that you have to somehow get rid of. And you've seen movies where people get sprayed with stuff. Well, not a good thing, because... The black tank maybe shouldn't be just a black tank. Now, in our case, we have the flush toilet, but with a little twist. We don't have a black tank. We have a combined waste tank. A combined waste tank means that our solids are floating in a lot more liquid, therefore they break up and they're easy to get rid of. Now, the dry toilet or the composting toilet. The dry toilet, well, I'm from Quebec speak French. And in French, we don't call them composting toilets. We call them toilettes sèches, which translated is a dry toilet. Because honestly, your fecal matter isn't mixing with the sawdust or whatever peat moss or whatever you're wanting to use in the toilet long enough to become compost. So it's a dry toilet. Now the dry toilet or the composting toilet works very well. A lot of people love it. They profess love for their toilet, which is a little rare. But the composting toilet, there's a lot of different ways of going about it. First of all, you can make one yourself. And the ones you make yourself, basically it's a bucket, a urine diverter, and some form of fan to evacuate the odors. The other way is buying a pre-made one. And there's a lot of choices out there. Upwards of $1,000. That's expensive for a toilet. But some things that some people may not know about a composting toilet. First of all, where are you going to get rid of it? Secondly, you need to clean the thing out. Third, you actually need to mix the composting or the compost once in a while. So some of the higher end toilets actually have a handle on them that you can play in your mud. Not something you want to do on a daily basis, but nonetheless. And you have to clean the toilet out. Now, calling it a dry toilet means there's no urine going in there and no liquid to flush with. The no urine means you have a urine diverter, and that urine diverter does a couple things. In some toilets, it goes to a little reserve that you take that reserve and you can dump it out somewhere. Others bring it to their gray tank, and now your gray tank may not necessarily be considered in all jurisdictions as a gray tank. As soon as you put human waste in there, even though it's liquid, it somehow becomes a black tank. There's no black in it. Learn to observe the local regulations before dumping that gray water on the ground if you have a diverting toilet. Now, the other type of toilet is the cassette toilet, the porta potty. And it has a bit of water in it, a little reserve for water and a little reserve for your waste. And you flush it just like normal. But when it fills up, you have to go empty it somewhere. And you can take the cassette out of it, very popular in Europe. You can take the cassette and just go dump the cassette. Some of them you have to bring the whole toilet with you into the public washroom, which may look a little odd. Now, there's another type of toilet, and that's the bag toilet. The bag toilets are basically a bag that twists around your waist, forming a little knot, and puts a new fresh bag to do your business in. And yes, I'm trying to avoid all these little stereotypical words, but nonetheless, we're working on it. We may edit some of them out, and we may not. With the different types of toilets, like I said, advantages. Composting toilet, you don't need a lot of water. The cassette toilet, it's portable. Take it anywhere. And actually, the composting toilet, you can pretty much take it anywhere as well. The flush toilet, advantage, well, it's easier to clean. 
and it just seems more normal, whatever normal is. And don't judge me here, everybody has their way of normal. And the flush toilet, for those of you who have never experienced it, it doesn't take that much water. It's not like the one in the house that every time you flush, uh, 1.6 gallons goes down the drain. No, it may be a cup or two. So you're not using a lot of water with those. The other differences in the toilets is your resale value. Now, with a very expensive composting toilet, it may actually negatively affect your resale value. If you're trying to sell your bus or RV or boat or whatever that has this type of toilet in it, well, some people might be afraid of it. On the other hand, some people might be afraid of the black tank. So yeah, it's a toss up. Now there's no wrong or right way of using a toilet. There's no wrong or right toilet to choose from. It's whatever best fits your needs. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below. You can always give me a thumbs up and maybe even hit that notification bell for future videos. Thanks a lot.